Welcome back to the Ixalan Limited set review, this time with blue. We're gonna go alphabetical again, starting with Air Elemental. Two blue and three for a 4-4 flyer. Air Elemental has been reprinted multiple times, and it's always a great one to have in your limited decks. 3.5 out of 5. Next up, Arcane Adaptation, a blue and two colors for this enchantment. You can see what it does. This is definitely more for constructed fringe play. Um, 0.5 out of 5, I mean, you might have some dinosaurs or vampire synergies, but overall, don't play this card. Cancel is next up, 2 blue and 1. Another reprint, instant counter target spell. This one's always fine. Um, I like having them, or at least access to a counter in my blue decks if possible. I think you're always going to be happy at least playing one. Sometimes you sideboard it out, but uh, generally pretty solid. 2 out of 5. Chart a course, blue and one for a sorcery. This is uncommon. Course, blue and one for a sorcery. This is uncommon. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you attacked with a creature this turn. One of the better card draw spells in blue. Uh, you're only paying two and you're at least drawing two cards. Even if you discard a card, you're getting the nice, you know, different options. And if you've attacked with a creature this turn, then you just straight up draw two for two mana. So I think this is actually like a 2.5 out of five. Daring Saboteur, a blue and a colors for a 2-1 human pirate. This is a rare. You can play a blue and two to give it unblockable for the turn. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. So it's a, uh, a different type of looter than we've seen before, but one that can get there in a late game just because if they don't kill it, they're going to continuously be taking two while you're filtering through your better cards. I think this is actually uh, highly playable in sealed and draft of course i'm going to give this a three hour dead eye quartermaster a blue and three for a two two human pirate uh not very good stats on its own but uh ability is when it enters the battlefield you may search your library for an equipment or vehicle card reveal it put it into your hand then shuffle your library so if you're able to tutor for a good equipment or vehicle if you have multiple in your deck even then this card goes way up in value uh, as the 4-mana 2-2 is not great standalone, but being able to tutor up one of your great cards could have some real upside. I'm going to give this a 3, a 3 out of 5. Deep Root Waters is a blue and 2 for an enchantment. Uncommon, whenever you cast a merfolk spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creature token with hexproof. This is one of these cards that I always want to be good, but until I actually play with it, I'm not sure how good it's going to be. You obviously need a large amount of merfolk cards to make this viable but I mean one one annoying to deal with as they are good chumpers and you can kind of go wide uh, in a pinch so uh, for, for right now I'm gonna give this a two but I'm sure that value could go way up depending on how many merfolk you actually have depths of desire a blue and two for an instant return target creature to its owner's hand create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap sacrifice this artifact add one mana of any color to your mana pool this is the first instance of a treasure i think we've seen in white or blue since these are uh, the first two uh reviews that we've done and this is just a very very solid card uh it's a bounce spell for three sure which is not a great rate but the fact that you can get that artifact um for, for added synergy is quite good, and you can ramp yourself as well. I'm going to give this a 2.5 out of 5 for Depths of Desire. Dive Down is a blue for an instant. Target creature you control gets plus 0, plus 3, and gains hexproof until end of turn. It ain't no Triton tactics, I'll tell you that much. Um, Dive Down has some real uses as a combat trick. Combat tricks aren't generally great and limited, but one that can protect a creature by just giving it hexproof. Uh, you know, kind of negating an opponent's removal spell could be really good. Plus, the toughness is huge. Um, this is probably still like a 1.5, but don't count it out. Dreamcaller Siren, 2 blue and 2 for a 3-3 three, three flying. Flash can block only creatures with flying, but when it enters the battlefield, if you control another pirate, tap up to 2 target non-land permanents. Uh, I wouldn't call it a limited bomb, but it's just very, very solid. It's going to win you a lot of games if you're able to draft it or open it in your sealed pool. This is probably a 3.5 out of 5. Entrancing Melody, 2 blue, X. Sorcery, gain control of target creature with converted mana cost, X. I actually think this is uh, on par with a bomb. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. The only thing that's really holding it back is the fact that you can't 
easily splash it and if you're trying to steal like a big dinosaur you're going to need a lot of mana but generally these type of effects in unlimited are hard to come by and just very very powerful it is a rare so you're not going to see it very frequently but entrancing melody is a great one favorable winds blue and one this is a reprint we've seen before um you know you're going to build some decks where favorable winds is well how do you put this favorable for your deck but overall, it's probably not going to be a high pickup in either draft or sealed. This is a 1.5 out of 5. Fleet Swallower, 2 blue and 5 for a 6-6 six, six fish. Whenever it attacks, target player puts the top half of his or her library rounded up into his or her graveyard. It's 7 mana for a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, it is a quick clock both mill-wise and... Uh, power and toughness wise, I don't think it's a bomb by any means, but it's definitely very, very powerful. This is probably 3, 3.5. Um, it's rare, so you're not going to see it too frequently. And again, it does take a while for you to mill an opponent because, say you cast this on turn 10. Both players have, you know, 23 cards left in their deck. It attacks the next turn, it mills like 12, then 6. It's still going to take a while to mill them out. So you're paying for like a 7 mana 6-6, six, six, but... It does have potential. In fact, it's probably closer to a 2.5 or a 3, but I just want it to be good. Headwater Sentries is a blue and 3 for a 2-5 Merfolk Warrior. We saw uh, 2-5s in Amonkhet, but they were zombies. Now we have 2-5s here in Ixalan, and they are Merfolk. I mean, it, it's a fine body. It has, uh, you know, Merfolk tribal synergies. Give it a 2 out of a 5. Herald of Secret Streams is a blue and three for a 2-3 Merfolk Warrior. It is a rare. Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them can't be blocked. With plus one plus one counters on them can't be blocked. So, you know, for instance, creatures with Explore that have plus one plus one counters can't be blocked. Um, I don't think this is a very good card, but you can definitely craft some scenarios where you get a lot of unblocked damage. This is probably a two out of five. Jace Cunning Castaway. Our Planeswalker, a Mythic, two blue and one. You can see all of the different abilities Jace has here. Planeswalkers in Limited are almost always just insane and uh, maybe less true for Jace, although still very, very powerful. If you're in blue or you open Jace uh, in your sealed pool, you're probably going to want to play it. This is a four out of a five. Kopala, Warden of Waves, 2 blue and 1 for a 2-2 two, two, Merfolk Wizard. Spells your opponent's cast that target a Merfolk you control cost 2 less to, or it's rather 2 more to cast. And then abilities your opponents activate that target a Merfolk you control cost 2 more to ca activate. You know, not amazing. It kind of gives you um, a spell pierce attached to all of your Merfolk just to, just to save them. You know, make your opponent pay 2 more, but nothing amazing here. This is 2 out of 5 for me. Lookout's Dispersal is a blue and two for an instant. Costs one less for each, or sorry, costs one less if you control Pirate, and then counter target spell unless its controller pays four. I like these type of cards, and especially if you can get the reduced deal of two mana, it's going to have uh, some blowout potential. This is maybe a two or a 2.5 out of five. Navigator's Ruin, a blue and two for an enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, if you attacked with a creature this turn, target opponent puts the top four cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. This uh, would go nicely with that fish. I think people are going to maybe overvalue this at first. These standalone mill effects aren't generally that good. Now, if you can pick up multiples in draft, I'm sure uh, it could be pretty good, as milling four is very quick. But generally speaking, uh, you know, not a very good card. 1.5 out of 5. One with the wind, blue and one. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and has flying. So it's like a spectral flight from older sets. I like these type of cards. Obviously, you are open to two for one removal if your opponent has a way to deal with the creature in response or just deal with the creature at some later point. But uh, this is a very, very powerful effect. So I'm going to give it a two out of five. Opt, another nice reprint from Invasion Block, one of my favorite cards. You know, it's not amazing, but it is good filler. Um, this is a 2 out of 5. Overflowing Insight, another Mythic, 3 blue and 4. Target player draws 7 cards. If you're able to cast this in Limited, you should not be losing the game unless, uh, you know, the, the opponent can kill you in, like, the next turn. Drawing 7 cards is a lot. You're going to be close to decking yourself at that point, I would imagine. Um, 
I mean, you cast this, you untap, you have just a wealth of resources. This might be like a 2.5 or a 3 out of 5. Perilous Voyage is a blue and one for an instant return target. Long land program that you don't control to its owner's hand. If its converted mana cost was two or less, scry two. So I like these type of effects more than unsummons because you can target planeswalkers, artifacts, whatevers, um, and still get some good value. I, I think this one is probably closer to a 2.5 uh, than any lower where, you know, you might find an unsummon effect. But Perilous Voyage has some good utility. Pirates prize the next card, a blue and three for a sorcery. Draw two cards, create a colorless treasure artifact token. Yeah, again, four mana for two cards is fine in limited. It is slow, and it's awkward that it is a sorcery, so you can't hold up some other spells in addition to holding the pirate's prize up. But, I mean, it ramps you as well, and it gives you that treasure. I think this is probably two points up. But, I mean, it ramps you as well, and it gives you that treasure. I think this is probably a two or a 2.5 out of five. Prosperous Pirates, a blue and four for a 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, create two colorless treasure tokens. Uh, I think this card is great. I will probably end up splashing it quite frequently in this set, as a 3-4 for five is fine stats, and two treasures could be really, really good. Uh, there are going to be some treasure synergies later in the line, or later in line in the set review. Um, it might not be for blue, but in other colors, so... Keep an eye out for utility with the treasures. I think this card is probably a 2.5 out of 5. River Sneak is a blue and one for a 1-1. One, one. Can't be blocked. And whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield in your control, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So standalone, not very good. 1-1, one, one, unblockable for two is nothing to write. If you do have the tribal Merfolk deck, sure, it can get in some damage. But uh, that's the only home that it's going to want to be in. Uh, I'm going to give this like a 1.5 or a 2. Obviously, it scales up with however many more Merfolk you have, but overall just doesn't impress me. River's Rebuke, 2 blue and 4. Sorcery, return all non-land permanents. Target player controls to their owner's hand. This card is annoying as hell. It is very, very powerful. I'm going to give it a 3.5 or maybe even a 4. Uh, it's a one-sided... Actually, it's just Cyclonic Rift. Return all non-land permanents, target player controls to the owner's hand. So, you know, if if it's on turn six and they have a two drop, three drop, four drop, you're bouncing nine mana worth of cards for six mana. Or later in the game, this allows you to just do so many things. You bounce all their creatures, you attack in, they have to use all of their resources again at a later point. I think this card is very, very powerful, um, and I expect it to be a I expect it to be a great one in draft and sealed. Run aground, blue and three. Put target artifact or creature on top of its owner's library. Always love these effects, especially when they're at instant. This is probably just a solid three out of five. Sailor of Means, blue and a two. Sorry, blue and two for a one four. Enters the battlefield. You get a treasure. It's fine. Nothing amazing, but certainly fine. Give it a two out of five. Shaper Apprentice, a blue and one for a two one. Has flying as long as you control another merfolk. So, you know, if it's a 2-1 flyer for two, that's well above the curve in limited. Um, and even just as a two-mana 2-1 two without the flying, that's fine curve filler. Uh, I think this card has some some decent apl aggro applications. Two, maybe even a 2.5 if you have the merfolk necessary to give it flying. Shipwreck looter, one blue and one, 2-1. Two, one. Raid when it enters the battlefield. If you attack, raid when it enters the battlefield. If you attack with the creature's turn, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Similar to the previous creature, uh, it's fine filler as a two one for two, and then added upside if you've attacked the creature. Again, maybe a two or a two point five for shipwreck looter. Shorekeeper is the next one. Uh, it's the cycle of the one mana cards that you can do something with later in the game for eight mana. This one sacrifices and draws three cards. Uh, and it is an O3 trilobite. Um, I don't know how to rate this as I'm not quite sure how fast the format's going to be. Eight mana is a hefty amount of mana. So tentatively, I'm going to give this a 1.5 out of 5. But if the format is slow and goes long, it could probably go up to a 2 or even a 2.5. Siren Lookout, blue and 2 for a 1-2 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, it explores. And that's pretty good. If you're paying 3 mana for a 2-3 flyer, I'd say above 
average curve in limited. Um, otherwise, you know, you get to put the land in your hand. So it's a three mana, one, two flyer that drew you a card. So overall, not too shabby, probably a 2.5 out of five. Siren Storm Tamer is a blue for a 1-1 Siren Pirate Wizard. It has flying, and you can pay a blue, sacrifice it to counter target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. I like this card a lot. Actually, as a 1-mana one 1-1 one flyer is kind of annoying in the later game. Maybe not so relevant later, but the ability to sacrifice it and just have that turn aside effect is really, really good. Uh, you know, you can counter a big removal spell if you're a better creature later on, and it's, it's pretty just annoying. So I'm going to give this a 2.5 out of 5. Siren's Ruse, blue and one, instant exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If a pirate was exiled this way, draw a card. So, obvious implications to go along with enter the battlefield's effects. If you have pirates, you get the card card draw abilities. You know, you can save a creature from a removal spell or block and save a creature mid-combat. I think this is a fine, fine trick. I'm probably going to give it a two out of five. Spell Pierce, another reprint we've been aching to see. Just a fine card. I'm not a huge fan of this in Limited. You might play it sometimes, especially if your opponent's showing you like that draw seven card or something, but overall not too great. More fringe than anything. Maybe a one or at most a 1.5 out of five. Spell Swindle. Now this is a sweet one. Two blue and three. Instant counter target spell. Create X colorless treasure artifact tokens where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So this is like a five mana mana drain but the nice thing is you don't have to use that mana immediately you can just have them later on in the game can you imagine countering a spell that costs five getting five treasures and uh, being able to you know cast multiple things a turn with the excess mana that you have or utilizing treasure treasure synergies i like this card I like this card a lot i'm going to give it a three out of five stormfleet aerialist blue and one for a one two flyer raid it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it if you attack the creature. 2 mana for a 2-3 flyout would be really, really solid. Now, obviously, you're not likely to be able to play it on curve unless you have a 1-drop. But uh, yeah, I think this card is, is not terrible, and it again has some pirate synergies. I'm going to give this card a 2 out of 5. Stormfleet Sp Spy is a 1-blue, 2 colors, 2-2 two -two human pirate. When it enters the battlefield, if you attack with a creature this turn, draw a card. So... 3 mana 2-2, two, two, not amazing, but if you do get the 3 mana 2-2 two, two draw card, it does have, um, you know, some good value. Probably a 2 or a 2.5 out of 5. Storm Sculptor, blue and 3 for a 3-2. Three, Can't be blocked. When it enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to those owner's hand. This is another reprint of, I think it was called Keystone Rogue, um, from like Return to Ravnica block. It, it's a merfolk, though, and it does have some good synergies. I think this is actually going to be one of the most annoying cards to play against. Uh, I think this might actually be like a 3 out of 5. Tempest Caller, 2 mana. Sorry, 2 blue, 2 colors for 2-3. When it enters the battlefield, tap all creatures target opponent controls. This is going to be another card that uh, it's going to be very, very hard to play around, but one that ends a lot of games, right? You play it. And then you get an alpha in as your opponent has no more blockers. <sighs> These cards are swingy and 4 mana for a 2-3 isn't the worst rate. I think this is probably a 3 out of 5. Water Trap Weaver, blue and 2 for a 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So just a reprint of Frost Links here. But it is now a Merfolk uh, synergy values. And in fact, it combos really nicely with that creature that we were just talking about, bounce a creature to your to your hand. So I think the Water Trap Weaver might be one of the best blue commons in a limited, or in the limited format. Uh, I'm going to give it a 3, maybe even a pushing a 3.5, but probably closer to a 3 out of 5. Wind Strider, a blue and 4 for a 3-3 three, three flash flying. Again, another reprint. Um, always solid cards. You get to frequently eat smaller creatures and ambush them. This is just a solid 3. 2.5 out of 5. And I think that wraps it up for all of the blue cards. A lot of sweet ones to check out here. Hopefully you guys enjoy these set reviews. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to be doing one for every color. So don't forget to check out all of the other colors of the Ixalan limited set review. And don't forget to follow along here on the Numa Thanami page. Thanks for watching, guys.